Hey, it's Dave. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Saturday's Rant and Rave. Strap yourselves in, folks. Today's going to be a doozy. You know, a lot of guitar players don't really know their music theory and they don't really know almost anything about music and they're very insecure about it. You can see it in their face if you mention a 7 flat 9 sharp 5 chord. It's just what? Some people, you know, don't know the chord, don't care. Some people get defensive about it. However, because of this, there's a lot of guitar players who love to put things in a box because they feel like they don't know something about this that they have to overcompensate and act like they know something about that. And what is that? Well, it can be tone woods. It can be things like, oh, mahogany is a much better wood for the body than, let's say, northern ash. Maple fingerboards are so much better for playing leads and rosewood's better for rhythm. What? It's this inane process of putting everything in like a little spot. The Mesa Dual Rectifier with the 6L6s sounds better for leads, but the EL34s in it make it sound better for rhythm. The Tube Screamer TS9 has a little bit better high end than the TS808, making it better for blah, 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 whatever. There's a hundred of these, and let me just squash these three. First of all, if we took two acoustic guitars, a Martin D18 and a Martin D28, and put the same set of strings on them, let's say we're going to put 80, 20, 12 to 53 on them. So we have the same exact strings, the same gauge. The guitars are going to sound different. One is made from rosewood, the other one is mahogany. Because those woods reflect sound differently, and because we are actually listening to the instruments as its own amplifier, in physics we call this forced resonance. We are listening to the forced resonance of the wood. They will sound different. However, according to the laws of physics, the strings will be vibrating identically. So if we had something to measure how the strings vibrate, oh, I don't know, let's say like a magnetic pickup, now, a magnetic pickup creates a magnetic field around ferrous strings. And the strings disturb the magnetic field. And the pickup recreates that frequency and sends it to the output jack. More times than not, it has to go through a volume pot, maybe a tone pot, a capacitor. Whatever you're using in there, it's going through that which has more bearing on the sound of your instrument than what the wood is made out of or what the fingerboard wood is made out of. Because vibrating strings rely on the mass of the string, the tension of the string, and the length of the string. And that is it. If then you're going to go into, say, like a tube screamer, you then go into the buffer. The buffer then takes it into the op amp. The op amp takes it to the tone circuit. Now you can reshape the sound. And that's before we even go into the amplifier and do it all over again. So it's just insane to think that this piece of wood has anything to do with it when that's not how the sound is being produced. So where the pickup is on the string's scale length is going to matter how close to the strings that pickup is, is going to matter. The pickup itself is going to matter. Now, there are some people in the business who will be dishonest and say, oh, this one sounds really good in Maple, because they assume you're stupid, and because they think you're stupid, they're going to try to make money off of you and sell you a bunch of bullshit. Also, I just want to say there are some players who will swear they hear the difference. And that is because they're holding on to the guitar and they actually can hear and feel the forced resonance coming off the guitar. However, that does not translate to what is going to their pedals or their amplifier. And that's why a lot of times when you see people do these demos where they're trying to tell you, they say 
It really sounded different when they were recording it, but when they went back to listen, they're surprised at how close the sounds are. That's because when they go back to listen, you take away that forced resonance and the vibration experience from the player. And also, that doesn't mean that the player, like myself, doesn't enjoy the vibration of a guitar. Everybody likes what they like. When I comment about tone woods, it's about tone wood. The wood itself, how I like the guitar to vibrate and how I want it to feel, every guitar is going to be different. I may like one more than the other, but what the audience is hearing and what the person is hearing and the experience of this guitar going through an amplifier, when you're playing on stage, they cannot hear your guitar. They can only hear what's coming out from the strings to the pickups to your board to the amplifier out to the crowd. That's all. So yes, you can hear a difference when you're playing your guitars and you're going to swear by it. I know people swear by it. Nobody wants to bet me on a double blind test that they can't tell the difference, but they can hear it. And I'm telling you, I understand it is an oral illusion. It is something you hear that you think everyone hears, they don't. Secondly, on this one post I saw about the dual rectifier. The dual rectifier comes with 6L6s. You can swap them for EL34s. I dial it in to sound the way I want it to sound. If I had to change the tubes and put EL34s in, I would just dial the sound where I want it to sound. That doesn't mean the knobs are going to stay in the exact same place. I'm going to move them. I'll probably change the presence. The treble, the bass, the mid. Either way, I'm moving the knobs. That's why they're there. Now that doesn't mean that all tubes sound the same. I love the 6V6 amplifiers. I don't necessarily know if it's the tube that's doing it, but I love the tube with the circuit. Let's say a Princeton or a Deluxe Reverb. I love those circuits, and those tubes are in that circuit, and I love that tube circuit. To me, I love it. It's just a, it's bright, it's got sizzle, I like it. But when you're comparing a high-gain amplifier, and you're swapping tubes and all this other stuff, you can adjust the sound. You just don't sit there and do a demo and keep everything at noon. And that brings me to my comment about pedals. When you take something like a Tube Screamer, and I'm not talking about companies that make modified Tube Screamers, because obviously everybody knows I love the King Tone Duelist. I love the King Tone Soloist. They're beautiful modified versions of the TS-808 circuit. However, actually, you know what? Forget about Tube Screamers. Let's go to the Klon. There's so many clones out there, and I've seen so many shootouts between all the Klons. And everyone's like, let's put them all at noon. Let's put them all at 3 o'clock. Let's move them to 9 o'clock. This is so dumb. Because, first of all, to get potentiometers that are perfectly matched, that are going to sound exactly the same, even in the same effing unit, if you had two Klon originals, they're not going to sound identical if you just put them at noon. Now, you can dial them in and get them so they both sound amazing but you can do that with the clones too. But I can't stand these pedal demos where everyone's like, here's everything at noon. How about make the clon sound good, the best you can make that clon sound, and then go to the clon clone and try to get that exact sound out of the clon. Forget where the knobs are at, just get it to sound like that. The tolerances and parts are going to make everything a little different. It doesn't make one better, it doesn't make one worse. It's the same damn pedal. And this is what Bill Finnegan has had to deal with when he deals with people saying that the gold clon and the silver clon, and he's like, it's the same fucking pedal. Anyway, since the dawn of time, men are just trying to put something in a box. Oh, that's awful. Very good.